I would say today for us is an, a very important day. It's a significant day in terms of the future of Saab and how Saab can operate as a newly independent premium car, car maker. We're here today to announce for us a very important strategic agreement. And uh, what we think is that uh, with that agreement, that will definitely take us a uh, long way into the future and a successful Saab. Before I talk a little bit more in detail about uh, the agreement as such, I'd like to give you a, a brief wrap-up as to what has happened since the 23rd of February. It's uh, important, I think, to remember that it's actually only seven months ago that we signed the agreement between Spiker and, and uh, General Motors. The good news during these seven months is that we have delivered on our financial business plan so far, and we're building gradually capability as a standalone company. Not only have we concentrated all of our operations to Sweden and to Trollhättan, but we've also restarted our production, increased capacity, launched the 9.5 in our, in our manufacturing facility, including the relocation of the convertible from uh, Austria to Sweden, and now building the convertible for the first time uh, here in Trollhättan. We restarted, of course, all of our marketing activities out in the marketplace, focusing primarily, of course, on the launch of the new 9.5. And as you probably have seen, uh, the response for the new 9.5 so far is extremely favorable, and we're, of course, happy with that. We haven't just launched the 9.5. We have continued to enhance it, and as of model year 11, we introduced a 1.6 turbo engine as well as a 2-liter TTI. D, uh, diesel engine, as well as, of course, a biopower, an E85 variant. So you can say now the 9.5 sedan really has a full range of, of offering out in the marketplace. But also for model year 11, we have continued to enhance the 9.3 range, which is now really a full range of, of good offering. And as of model year 11, we have introduced a, a new diesel program with 180 horsepower TTID, that delivers only 119 gram of CO2, which, as you know, is, is a very important threshold for many, many markets. If we look into the future at the Los Angeles Auto Show, we will launch the 94X, which is our first entry into the crossover segment, crossover segment that is growing in importance uh, throughout the world. And, of course, following that, you will see the 95 Sport Combi, the wagon version of the 95, which is so important for in particular, our home, our home market. And following that, in 2012, the all-new 9.3 will, of course, be, uh, be launched. And that, you can say, at that time, we really have the full range of products where the recently launched 9.5 sedan will be the oldest car that we have in the market, which has never, I would say, happened before in the, uh, in the, Saab, the history of Saab. We have also taken over all the responsibilities out in the marketplace, and we're now present under our control in 50 countries, uh, taking over all the re sales responsibilities for General Motors. And we have signed agreements with many different financing institutes to ensure that dealer and customer financing are available in these, in these markets. We've also continued to build our organization uh, hiring, in particular, some key positions. Adrian Hallmark as our executive director for sales, as well as Jason Castriota, the head of, of design. Two very important and strategic um, uh, hiring or recruits in terms of building up the standalone organization. But we are also looking at new partnerships and technologies. And... Uh, as an independent company, we can really do that. And at the Paris Auto Show, we will show what we call our e-power concept car, which is a fully electrical vehicle. It is a joint uh, activity together with Boston Power, uh, Electro Engine, and some other organizations. We continue to enhance our relationship with Beijing Automotive uh, as it relates to the China development. And last week, as you know, we announced a, a joint venture together with American Axle for the development of an all-new electrical all-wheel drive system. For us, you can say the next, the next generation all-wheel drive system. 
I would say all in all, I could continue and make this list very, very long if I wanted to add everything that has happened. But in my opinion, a lot has happened. And our employees have done a fantastic job to really accomplish this over such a poor, short period of, period of time. But now, of course, uh, back to why we're here today. And um, the real reason for calling you in with such a short notice. Uh, and it gives me, of course, great pleasure to announce a, an exciting new relationship between Saab and BMW. I think we all know that BMW engines and their fuel savings innovations are widely regarded as the benchmark in the premium car segment. Uh, and from 2012, BMW will supply to Saab a 1.6 turbocharged gasoline engine, which will be introduced and integrated in the next generation Saabs, more specifically the next generation 9.5. It is 9.3, sorry, thanks. It is a four-cylinder turbocharged engine which will deliver around 200 horsepower. Uh, the engine will, of course, be adapted and integrated to meet the Saab requirements. Um, and we are actually at this point conducting a feasibility study to also make that into a biopower engine, in other words, running on, on E85. We are, of course, with this relationship exploring other opportunities uh, together with BMW, but it's too early to say anything more about that at this time. I think we have, in a very short period of time, developed an excellent relationship with BMW, and I would say this uh, forms a good foundation as it relates to the delivery of these, of these uh, engines, and we're really happy about that. It will be a, it's a milestone for Saab to get to this point. And what I'd like to do now is to invite Ian and Victor to come up and reveal uh, the engine that we're actually talking about. Okay, there we go. All right, this is it. That is working. Mm. Beautiful piece. <laughs> it's a beautiful piece. Look at that turbo. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know that Ian would like to say a few words, so Ian, I'll hand it over to you. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure, and uh, we're very pleased to be here today on a, on a sunny day. It was wet when we left Munich this morning, so Victor, Janaka, thank you for the, the invitation to be part of your presentation today. It's back in 2007 that BMW, under strategy number one, which I'm sure many of you have heard about, uh, we decided that we would also be very interested in exploring the opportunity of selling our powertrains and selling our engine uh, technology to other manufacturers. So today for us is a, a very uh, significant moment as well. Um, this relationship uh, with Saab really uh, marks uh, a major step uh, towards that uh, direction that uh, we set about in 2007. And I think, you know, first of all, what I'd also like to say is that over the last few months, the relationship between our team and the team here from Saab has been exceptional. Uh, a very open, very constructive, uh, very forward uh, approach, which uh, I thank you for as well, because um, we know these things can be quite challenging, but it has gone uh, exceptionally smoothly over the last uh, few weeks or so. Uh, I think equally, and you know, we know this from research, that uh, BMW and, and Saab, uh, they share with their customers some passionate uh, drivers of, of vehicles. Uh, I think they're very different customers, uh, but at the same time, they care about their vehicles and they care about their powertrains. Uh, so I think the, the fit uh, is very good in this respect. Uh, as you heard, this is a, a 200 horsepower uh, engine, uh, but at the same time with the uh, technology to maintain the right CO2s, the appropriate CO2s, very frugal uh, in its fuel consumption. And as some of you may be aware, for the fourth consecutive year, uh, this has topped the charts in the engine of the year category uh, uh, awards, which uh, for the engine people in the room is a very significant uh, award ceremony every year. So we're very pleased with uh, the capability of this. It'll be manufactured at our Hamshall factory in the United Kingdom. 
uh, and obviously shipped here. And as Janoka said, it will uh, clearly be modified to, to suit the sub uh, requirements uh, and the installation of the, the new 9.3. Now, you know, as we go forward, uh, yes, we are looking at exploring uh, other opportunities, but it's, uh, it's too early to, uh, to say whether that would be uh, or what that will be uh, into the future. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm delighted to be here today. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be part of this presentation, as I say again. Uh, I wish uh, our colleagues from Saab every success, because as they're more successful, we supply more engines, uh, and that makes us happy too. So uh, with that, thanks again for being part of this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ian. Thank you, team, team on both sides, Eric, Gunther, Chalassé. Um, we have had a, a wonderful time making this joint venture, and I think that we can only conclude that BMW is the right partner for us. The wonderful thing, and I've said this on many occasions, that the perfect storm generated in this industry is that everybody is now looking at bringing his break-even point down. Every car manufacturer thinks about one thing and one thing only. How can we bring that break-even point down? And the quickest fix to bring your break-even point down is sharing your technology. And Saab in that sense is not only on the receiving end, but also on the giving end. We've seen the transaction with Beijing Automotive last year, and perhaps many more opportunities will arise. But the one that we're focusing on today is the one that is really a landmark for us. I can't tell you how proud I am that we can announce only seven months into the deal a transaction with BMW. I mean, the number one brand in the premium car market segment. And, and they are now, we can call them now our partners. Uh, and that is something that makes me not only uh, very joyful, but also very proud. Um, this, this industry is in, in a constant change. And I think that we'll see many more um, cooperations and, and technology sharing arrangements throughout the industry and hopefully also in the context of Saab. Um, Saab has achieved, as Jan Ark explained, a lot in the past seven months. Uh, and still we feel it could have gone faster. But we're pushing and pushing and our entire in, uh, company is, is bursting at the seams of the energy that we put into recovering what we lost in the, in the past two years when Saab was pretty much in turmoil. What we're really seeing is a tremendous confirmation in the market that Saab is here to stay. And I think that the current transaction with BMW is definitely perceived as one where we are making long-term commitments. You don't go into a supply agreement for engines for a, for a brief period of time. This is for the new 93, a car that when it will come uh, uh, on the market will strike everyone as a true Saab. Jason Castriota, who joined us uh, uh, quite recently has done, uh, as far as we can uh, internally judge, a phenomenal job. You will be able to recognize the new 93 if there would be no logos on it. It's a true Saab in the purest sense, and we're extre extremely proud that this car will be propelled by this engine, this state-of-the-art engine made by BMW. So where do we go from here? Well, we go to Paris. And in Paris, as Jan Ark said, we'll show our electric car. Um, but there is so much more to come in the, in the very near future. Los Angeles, we will show you the 94X, and then, of course, next year, the Sport Combi, the uh, station wagon version of the 95, which is extremely important for the Nordic markets. And then, of course, in 2012, our new 93. That is what the product program is um, that we have laid out. And, of course, as you probably know, on our wish list is a small SAP. But that is too early to tell, so I'm just a little bit ahead of you, because I know everybody will be talking about what, what's going to happen to this Project 92, this little small SAP. Well, it's too early to tell. It's, it's a fact that it's not in our business plan. Um, so if we would start a SAP 92, we would have to have partners to do it. Well, I can assure you, we're on it, and if there's something to be said about that, we will definitely come out in a, in a similar setting.